We're looking at module five on image restoration. I want you to download this material here and have a look at this document. Follow through this document as we go along. Now I want to introduce something called the point spread function. The point spread function of an imaging system describes how an imaging system blurs a point. When you're looking at a point, what do you get? The output of the imaging system is given by this point spread function. You have a point object, you get the point spread function. The point is spread, the point is blurred. So the point spread function is this inherent blurring of an imaging system. The imaging system is a camera or a telescope or a microscope or a CT scanner or whatever. When you take an image of a point image, a point object, you get a blurred image. Generally, it's a Gaussian, has a Gaussian cross section. That is, the profile of the point spread function will be Gaussian and the full width at half maximum, that is the the amount of blur is taken as the resolution, the analog resolution of the system, the full width at half maximum of the point spread function. And you can't get anything smaller. You can't get an image smaller than the point spread function because even a point object gives you an image which is the width of the point spread function. So this can only get worse in a digital system, of course, which depends on the sampling also, that is the pixel size. And you should go back and read page 36 of the textbook and look at figure 2.18. The point spread function, a good imaging system will have a narrow point spread function. That means there's not much blurring. If I move in, Although most of this material is in um, chapter chapter 8 of the book, we're going to pull some material in from chapter 7. So if you look at page 220 in chapter 7, this figure 725, these are a number of objects as seen by an imaging system which has a point spread function given by this Gaussian. And this is what you see as an image. So these are objects that pass through an imaging system and these are the images that are produced. Every object is a linear combination of points and the effect is going to be that the object is convolved with the point spread function of the imaging system, of the camera, of the microscope, whatever. And we get on the other side an image. We can see for large objects, that is large compared with the point spread function, then the point spread function just blurs the edges of the objects. You can think of this here as being half of the Gaussian and this is the other half of the Gaussian point spread function. The problem is when you start looking at smaller objects, you see, they get blurred and they get blurred. And when you come to objects that are smaller than the point spread function, well, you can't really see anything smaller than the point spread function. What you get out when you do the convolution of these objects with the point spread function, you get images which are always the width of the point spread function, even though the objects are narrower than the point spread function, the image, the images can't be any narrower than the width of the point spread function. So they appear as that width, but they have reduced contrast as you go to smaller and smaller images. Convolution is a process which preserves the area underneath the profile. So this area is preserved here, this area is preserved, but as the width is larger than these widths, then the height of this will get smaller and smaller. And you should read section 7.6 of the book. Now, the Fourier transform 
of the point spread function. The point spread function is a Gaussian shape, so the Fourier transform of it will be another Gaussian. It's called the optical transfer function, and it's complex, as all Fourier transforms are. So it determines the amplitude and the phase of the image relative to the object. We generally only look at the magnitude of the optical transfer function and that's called the modulation transfer function MTF. This shows you different point spread functions and what their MTFs are. So the point spread function is the amount of blurring in the spatial domain and the Fourier transform of that is the frequency response in terms of frequency here. Um, Note that these are Gaussians too. Uh, they continue as Gaussians over the other side. We don't bother with the other side because frequencies less than zero are not physical. But we can see here if we have a narrow Gaussian point spread function, that means hardly any blurring. This means an excellent camera, an excellent instrument. Then the Fourier transform of a narrow Gaussian is a very wide Gaussian. This is another way of saying it's a good instrument. It doesn't blur much. It has a good frequency response. It lets through all the frequencies of an image, multiplies them all by close to one. You see, if we get a less good instrument, a less good camera, a cheaper camera. Its point spread function is wider, it blurs more. A wider Gaussian gives a narrower Gaussian, narrower than this one in the Fourier domain. That is, it doesn't pass the frequencies so well. It passes low frequencies, but not so much high frequencies. It's acting like a low-pass filter. And if you get a really cheap instrument, a really cheap camera, which does a lot of blurring in the spatial domain, that's equivalent to, because remember, the MTF is the Fourier transform of the point spread function. This here will have an MTF like this. It only passes... You know, very low frequencies, and then it starts to attenuate them pretty quickly. So this is a poor frequency response. This is our cheap instrument. I want you to read, remember, read that uh, section 7.6. We're going to go move on into our chapter 8 and go to page 259. This is very similar to uh, a picture that we talked about before. This is now what happens in an imaging system. An imaging system that's not perfect. No imaging system is perfect. They all add a bit of blur. That is, their frequency response is not infinite. If we're looking at an object here, then it gets blurred a bit by the point spread function and this is the resulting image that we see. Equivalent, another way of looking at that is in the frequency domain, if we have the Fourier transform of the object, we'll multiply, it'll be multiplied by the optical transfer function or the MTF, if we like, which is the Fourier transform of the point spread function, which will give us this, which looks like the same thing in the in the spatial domain. So imaging then is blurring by convolution in the spatial domain, blurring by this point spread function. And we can see that in equation 815. The original object gets blurred by the point spread function to give us an image. And in the frequency domain, it'll look like this. This G is this F multiplied by the modulation transfer function. If we get this image here, we know it's blurred. We would like to have the original object. You know, we would like to recover this here by going backwards from here to here by doing deconvolution. Deconvolution is not possible in the spatial domain. You know, convolution is this complicated op operation, sum of products 
move through pixel by pixel, there's no way we can do the reverse mathematical operation. So we cannot deconvolve in the spatial domain, but we could do it in the frequency domain. We could take our image and take the Fourier transform of it and divide it by the optical transfer function or the MTF to get here and then take the inverse Fourier transform to get back to the original image. So that's restoring the image from the blurred image to the original one by doing deconvolution in the frequency domain. That is, we divide G by the optical transfer function. However, this process is usually disappointing in practice because H is a Gaussian and it'll have small values beyond a cutoff frequency or at high frequencies anyway. And division by zero will cause a numerical overflow in F. So it never works very well. The process is even more complicated by the fact that not only does our object coming in get convolved with the point spread function, there will also be noise within the system, within the imaging system that will be added on before we get to the image, the output image. This is what happens in the Fourier domain. You know, we've got the Fourier transform of that, the Fourier transform of that. Instead of convolution, they get multiplied. And then there's noise comes along with a noise power spectrum here. And that gets added you know, the, in the frequency domain. An add is an add in the spatial domain is an add in the frequency domain, and so we get the result here. We get this here, and if we try to recover the original signal or the capital F, and we'll take the inverse Fourier transform to get F, we'll be doing this sort of thing here by rearranging eight eighteen, and again will get the possibility, probability I should say, of division by zero. This tends to be called the direct inverse filtering. And this problem of division by zero le leads to the development of Wiener filtering. And that's going to be the subject of our next video.